hello, welcome to my channel. My name is Rococo. If you're a return viewer, then welcome back. In today's section of Breaking Down the Face Beat, we're going to tackle why we do the in-between stages of makeup while I get unready from the day. A lot of times when people think about makeup, their first thought is things like lipstick, blush, mascara, and eyeliner. It's easy to see why we'd use those products, but there's actually several steps that don't look necessarily like they do anything, and those can be integral to a makeup look depending on your end goal. As is the case with any product, you're not actually obligated to use all or any of these products, but an informed choice is a good choice. So let's talk about what these products do so you can find what's right for you. You basically have two types of in-between steps. You have the steps that create a base for putting your makeup on, and the ones that keep your makeup on for a longer period of time. So if we're being honest, a good base also helps keep your makeup on longer too. Creating a base for your makeup comes with skincare, priming, and color correction. While I do use skincare as a term to refer to anything you do to take care of your skin, in this video, I would like to make a differentiation. Skincare, in my opinion, is a step up from skin hygiene. Skin hygiene keeps your skin healthy Healthy skin is easier to apply makeup and undoes a lot of the crud wearing makeup causes. Skin care is all the extra feel good stuff that boosts the skin beyond your basic wash tone moisturize. However, there is a lot of privilege in skincare. It's expensive. It's time consuming. It's got many products that have their success measures rooted in colorism and ageism and it requires healthcare access if you have any underlying conditions. These things keep skincare, at least in the way it's often portrayed in the beauty and fashion industry, at a level of inaccessibility to a lot of people. Don't get me wrong, skincare feels nice and you're absolutely welcome to enjoy it. But if it's not in your cards, your product count and use does not define if you are taking care of yourself which is the most important. You aren't required to have a 12 step face program that takes three hours and costs $900. You and your skin are worthy and beautiful and a fantastic makeup base as is, okay? So if you can do that extra step of skincare, it's great, but just skin hygiene is fantastic for keeping your base canvas ready to go. Moving on to what you do at the same time as makeup, we've got primer. Primer is usually for smoothing skin texture and minimizing the appearance of pores. There are several types of primer out there and not all primers work for all people. Some people forgo primer altogether and bust out moisturizer combos instead. Basically, a primer is a really good for ensuring makeup that you apply goes on smoothly. The trick is making sure your foundation and your primer are compatible because some primers make your foundation separate, so you'll have to play around to find what works best for your favorite foundation. It's also important to keep in mind that primers have different weights to them. Your comfort level with primer usage may directly correlate to how heavy your primer is. Some of them are quite thick and substantial and you will notice them on your face. If that is not something you're comfortable with, you may not be interested in that particular primer and you may not be interested in primer at all. This is totally fine, but it is definitely the trade-off you're going to have to consider to get those quote unquote flawless looks that erase all of your skin texture and make you look photoshopped. Though, if we're being honest, nothing is gonna make you look photoshopped except for Photoshop. Primer and skincare slash hygiene manage the textures in your base, but there's another in-between step of your base prep, and that is color correction. Color correction uses color theory to cancel out the hues in your skin you want masked by foundation that aren't getting covered by concealer or foundation alone. To put it simply, using the opposite color of something you want to hide, like a pimple, you neutralize that color, making it easier to conceal. You don't actually need to understand color theory to use color correction products, as most of the market are sold with an explanation on what to use it for, and there's always Google. All you need to remember is what product to grab. You can use color correction for everything from pimples to tattoos. You just have to check to make sure you've got the right color for the job. 
Two things you want to remember for color correction are less is more, and it's not inherently a light coverage option. A little goes a long way. These are usually bold colors. And again, it's an added layer. So it's not inherently a light coverage kind of vibe. If concealer is politely asking something not to be seen, color correction is demanding it. With that in mind, how much you care is going to play a big role in whether you use this as an in-between step. If you aren't in a position where you're really going to be bothered by some pimples or dark circles showing through, don't. Plus, a lot of foundations include a level of color correction built in because that's how they are made, so you may not even need this step to create the base you want. As always, play around! I promise you can always change your mind. Moving on from the base, we have ways to keep our makeup in place for a longer period of time. Face creation comes before makeup starts for the most part, but getting your makeup to stay where you put it happens mostly during and after makeup application. A good base slash priming does help with longevity, but the real trick lies with setting spray and powder. Of the two, setting powder has a type. It does not like dry skin. Powder can and will drink up the oils from your skin, so if you're already having issues with dryness, it's best to leave it be. I have combination skin, so powder is a hit or miss depending on the day. Basically, the point of powder is to either one, use heat to force your liquid and cream products to bond with the powder product, known as baking, two, Absorb the excess oil making your makeup slide off your face, known as setting. Or three, help blur textures such as scarring, known as finishing. Powder finishes can also help prevent your makeup from rubbing off too easily and help reduce shine. A lot of people who do use powder don't use it all over their face, just in certain areas. So strategy here is key. If strategy isn't so much your thing, or if you have dry skin, fortunately, we have another product meant for keeping your face in place. And that's setting spray. Setting spray is exactly what it sounds like. As I said in my previous video, setting spray is effectively hairspray for your face. You can actually use hairspray, though I don't suggest it as a general choice. Unlike setting spray, you kind of have to mist it in the air and let it drop on your face, which is not super comfortable and it's not super great for your skin health in general. In contrast, real setting spray is a lot lighter than hairspray will ever be and it's actually made for your face. My personal favorite is All Nighter by Urban Decay. However, there are plenty on the market to experiment with for your needs and price range. Regardless of your skin type, setting spray is going to be your go-to product for making sure your makeup stays where you put it. And it requires barely any technique. Hold it a bit away from your face, spray it at your face. You can do little squiggles or circles to make sure it gets all over, but that's pretty much it. You can spray it when you've reached the end of your makeup look, or if you're like me and have decided shellacked is the word of the week every week, when it comes to your makeup, you can do it for each finished step. We're talking eyeshadow, spray, foundation, contour, spray, finishing touches, one more spray, and possibly another one for luck. At the end of the day, makeup is a type of artistry and you are the artist. So regardless if you feel the same way as me about longevity or whatever, you get to choose the steps you follow and which ones you don't. Yes, these in-between steps lend themselves to a more finished or longer lasting result, but you're never required to do what you aren't comfortable with. Go ahead and play with what you use or omit for these in-between stages. You may surprise yourself with what you find works for you. Everyone's different and everyone's got their own combination. You just gotta look for it. As always, I'm super thankful for you stopping by. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share, and check me out on my other platforms if you want more of my content. Until next time, love ya!